I apologize that she went to Howard, you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> your family, you know, but, Don't do that. You know, I understand from that Everybody knows that they that wish much, they so. were at Howard. <laughs> uh, I went for homecoming, that was good enough. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That was good enough for me. Then I got it My head in my bag. DJ Artistic, thank you so much for coming and being here with me. No problem, thank you for having me. Of course, you have basically taken over the LA music DJ scene, I feel like. I feel like every time we talk about, like, I hear DJ, I hear your name, like, you're really out there. Well, thank you, I'm still trying to grow, I mean, LA is a huge city, so it's no such thing as taking over until you're making millions per week. Okay. So I'm not quite there. Almost. Not, you know, getting there. Okay. On the way. On the way. <laughs> so, yeah. You're an HBCU alum, graduated from FAMU, Florida A&M. Um, <laughs> is Graduates. that where you started DJing or were you DJing before then? Yeah, I started officially DJing at FAMU back in maybe 06. I guess if you ask my parents, I was DJing for them back in fourth grade, just okay. like making them sit on the couch and listen to me play different CDs yeah. with no mixing. But as far as doing actual parties, yeah, it started at FAMU back in like 06. So I was just doing house parties. I would play it off of like a Windows Media playlist yeah. off of a, a Windows PC back then. And I would just do a playlist for like hours. But I started mixing and using turntables back in like 07. Okay. So I was producing before that. So I started making beats producing back in like 95. So. Okay. I've been doing music forever. It all uh, like ties in. I feel like all my friends who are DJs, they are like producers too. Yeah, most most DJs produce. Usually yeah. it's the opposite. Usually they start as a DJ, then they start producing later. Got it. But for me, I was the opposite. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then uh, what made you start DJing in the first place? Uh, mainly being out at FAMU where everybody was from somewhere different and us being from LA, like we had a whole different style of music. Mm -hmm. So even back then, even though uh, we were still kind of living off the 90s music that we had, it was where the clubs, all you heard was stuff from Louisiana, Florida, Atlanta. Uh, 03, you still heard the East Coast stuff back when 50 and Joe Bugney had it popping. But mm -hmm. by 05, 06, it was nothing but down south music. Mm -hmm. So even though we enjoyed it, it was just not enough West Coast music. So we would just have West Coast parties at the house. So okay. we would just have these West Coast parties playing nothing but all, that's back when hyphy was popping. So it was like all the hyphy music from the Bay, all the old school LA stuff, and we just have parties. And then it went from those to where people from Florida would still come, people from Atlanta would come. and that asked me to play their music too, so I had to incorporate yeah. everybody's music at one time. So that's where it all started from. Okay. I remember like my first party at Howard, I was like, hey, like y'all don't play no LA stuff. And then anything. even yeah. the music like almost sounded foreign. I'm like, what is this? Until you like are in it and then that's like all you listen yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, and plus like I think for you, if you when you got to Howard, at least the whole West Coast stuff was kinda going with the DJ mustard and yeah, Tyler Sign exactly. YZ, but I was there from 02 to 08 back when there was really no LA stuff really okay. being played. So, okay. like Blood of Whistle and Tell Me When to Go came out 06, and even Blood of Whistle didn't get played till later. Wow. So, it was just all, all down south stuff. So, okay. kind of the same thing. Right. Yeah. Do you appreciate that now, like having that music influence? Oh, definitely. I mean, the reason that I became what I am now as a DJ is because I was out there hearing everybody's music. Because the same way we have regional stuff that only we know. Every city has the same thing. So, of course, DC had the go-go music. And mm -hmm. Before FAMU, I didn't know what that was. Like, I had a cousin who told me, me about it. And then, like, even if you hear, hear about it from somebody, you don't really care until you hear or see a whole crowd react to it. Then it's like, what is this sexy lady song? What is this overnight <laughs> right. scenario? The whole crowd seeing it, it's like, already it does something. So, yeah. seeing that happen, seeing, that was the same way that for us, if we play some Sugar Free or mm -hmm. some YG that only we know, like, they look at us kind of like, what are y'all dancing Seriously. to? Seriously. But it's like, that's what makes us uh, go. So, All my just friends seeing that for every city just made me say, okay, so let me learn the, the deepest songs for every single yeah. city out there. So, yeah. That's yeah. What, that's what makes a good DJ, right? I would say so. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, everybody is different levels to me. Is where every single region has the main songs that everybody knows. So, we have California Love. DC has Doing the Butt, Chicago has Crucial Conflict, Hey, and Finito. But mm -hmm. if you go deep into the hood of each city, you hear those here and there on the radio. But if you go to a hood club, you're hearing stuff that only they know. Yeah. So knowing those songs gets everybody going. Right. Yeah. Um, so I've heard that the DJ culture at an HBCU is like completely different. Would you agree? Different from LA or just for different I think just different, period. period. They say like it's just a different vibe that you can't really like get anywhere else. I would say so. Yeah, HBCU DJs have their own personality. It's mm -hmm. where 
the funny thing about HBCUs when it comes to homecoming is like a lot of time when it comes to homecoming, they always try to get the biggest DJs from around the country. So in the, the 90s, that might have been like Kid Capri or it could have been Biz Marquis, whoever. And then now it might be, say, Esco, Drama mm -hmm. Cannon. And it's like even uh, Family Homecoming last year, they had, um, what's his name from Breakfast Club, um, Envy. So it's okay. like the thing about, about that is that no matter how big of a DJ you are, Overall, if you don't know the, the local HBCU stuff, it's not gonna matter. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm sure Kick Capri is the type that probably study and say, okay, if I'm going to Howard, let me learn the local stuff along with the right. the main stuff I already know. So the same thing with um, like with Envy, he played all, all the main hits, the swag surf and all mm -hmm. that. But the DJ before him had the crowd more hype because he was playing all the, the straight Florida Got music it. that only they knew. That's like so when you really like, have to know your crowd. And you have to. You get to know all the crowd, all the, the small nuances, just the small inside jokes. It might be jokes about financial aid. It might be no, about seriously. certain certain stuff about majors. Like with my pharmacy majors, I can't believe y'all y'all actually partying on a Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. Like this little small nuances make the whole make the whole experience different as yeah. a DJ out there. So, yeah, that's yeah. real. Um, what? So you've DJed for so many people from Common, uh, Stevie Wonder. The list goes on. Issa Rae. Yeah. I was watching yeah. um, Instagram story like way back when she was having her house party, oh, you saw and then it? I yeah. saw you, and I was like, okay, yeah, like he's really liking yeah. everything. Yeah. So how would you describe the Issa Rae house party? It's it's like the most perfect party because it's basically it's the best of every world it's like you're in malibu so you have the coastal view this amazing house right I mean, everybody there is from inglewood and south central and gardena <laughs> oh, and long it. beach so it's like i was playing everything from the super hood la music to the the straight 90s music to all the new ratchet stuff to, yeah. to the r&b so is this where everybody is just having fun it's like even though a celebrity's there it doesn't even matter like if nobody pointed out to you that's so and so that's so and so you wouldn't even notice or care because everybody's just kind of vibing it's not just one of those parties where everybody's trying to be on their phone, like, let me get a picture of so-and-so. Everybody's actually having fun. Because so. right. even, like, Diddy joked about it, about it with her. Like, Diddy saw the same story that you saw, and he was just like, hey, invite me to, to your next party. And she was like, oh, I, all I do is have regular parties. He was like, I like regular parties. Exactly. It's like, that's the best way to me. It's not one of those Hollywoods. You have to be somebody to be inside and so, join it. So. Do you think that has yeah. a lot to do with, like, Issa Rae's personality? Because I feel like she's real, like, yeah, for sure. Her. It's all about her personality to me. It's about her personality, just the whole... She has kind of like, she's, she's perfect for this era because mm -hmm. it's like, she represents like the everyday woman who is like, who has both sides going. Like, women always joke about how they, they love Ida B. Wells and Cardi B. It's like <laughs> the same type of thing. It's Seriously. like, everybody's educated, but they still have that inner right. romantic type of side to them. So yeah. it's like that perfect mixture. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I saw on your website that you're going to be on a episode, right? For I'm Insecure. On, yeah, I'm on episode uh, two coming episode up. Episode two. So, that's yeah. what I was going to ask. Congrats. Yeah. Thank you for that's that. really Thank cool. You. I think it's August 19th. So. Okay, everybody, we got to all look at that. Yeah, make uh -huh. sure you check that out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have any lines, but I it's think... Okay. Um, I'm just DJing in the background. Yeah. yeah, I'm there with a family <laughs> shirt on representing. Oh so, yes, yeah. you have to. Yeah. I have like, to. Like literally. Yeah. Um. So, what would you say was like your groundbreaking moment where you knew that like DJing was your thing? Did you even have one? I would say um, I had different levels or different groundbreaking moments at each level. It okay. was where almost every year to us had that one party at one event where it's just like, all right, I can do this. So, initially, it was probably just doing. Um, doing big events on FAMU's campus back in like 08. It's like, okay, if I can get all these people people going, it's not my regular crowd, because I was used to doing just a house party mm -hmm. with all my friends. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to please them, but once you start getting people who don't know you, they don't care who you are like that. Yeah. But once I started to see, okay, I can actually hit them, it all worked. I would say overall, the biggest landmark was probably the uh, flavor battle. Okay. I won the flavor battle back in 2014. It was a, right. a battle that McDonald's had. So with that, it was one of those weird stepping stones that it was two-sided, it's where on one side it means, okay, I have actually made it, I guess I accomplished something, but the flip side is, okay, you got that, what's next? So mm -hmm. I had to kind of follow up on the what's next more than anything else. So to me, I was just trying to bask in the glory for a quick second, but everybody was like, okay, you won that, so what are you doing next? Yeah. It's like, Dang. all right, let it's me like step you gotta keep going. Yeah, yeah, there's no stopping, so. Yeah. I'll say that's some of the biggest landmarks though. Okay. Yeah. Um, what would you say is like the defining moment where you just knew that like DJing do you feel like DJing is your purpose? Like, do you, hmm. you know, what was that moment where you felt like, okay, Define. this is what I want to do for my life? I would say, um, what was the defining? Possibly paid dues as far as just mm. the overall um, crowd reaction, because that was a, a concert I did back in 2013, a mm -hmm. long time ago now, but it was where um, the concert had about 26,000 people there, and just seeing how the crowd responded, because 
for some reason I wasn't even nervous. Usually I used to get nervous before events, but that one I was just real calm and I just felt like, what's the worst that could happen? They can't, yeah. they can't cross the stage and jump me if I play the wrong song. Yeah. So <laughs> as long as they, as long as they, you know, don't jump me from yeah. the crowd, I'm good. So but, but just, I just focused on the crowd, the energy and just kept it going the whole time. And I felt like, okay, that was, it felt almost easy. Like once I got into it. So that's probably the, uh, the, the defining moment I would say, because I had a lot of hype behind it. And just being, being able to DJ for artists who I grew up on, like Warren G was there and they regulate, mm -hmm. and it was back when like Problem Like What just came out, Trinidad James just had all go to everything, they were all there performing, and I'm the one who was keeping the crowd hype between these acts, so yeah. it was like, and sometimes the crowd would be more hype for me than some of the artists, so That's I felt dope. like, okay, I, I could do this. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, I know the DJ life is like pretty crazy, you're always traveling, always at Play-Doh parties, yeah. you know, always a lot of people around you, I'm sure. You know, it sounds like the life, like on paper, I mean, yeah. right? Um, yeah. As much hustle and grind that it is, is it something that you will never get tired of? There's certain things you get tired of, like even when it comes to just traveling, like I just don't care for the the, the, the travel, travel as far as the um, traveling itself. Like I'm tired of airports, I'm tired of going yeah, to airports that don't have TSA pre-check. I'm tired okay. of having to, having to go to certain, you know, it's, it's where, I'll say this too, I'll say that once I get to a certain level where I can be first class and get like that mm -hmm. treatment per se, then it'll be even better. But that's probably the hardest part is just the the travel, just having to have suitcases, getting there and realizing they cracked my suitcase and cracked the turntable case and, yeah. oh, and, de no. and dealing with um, even just sleeping because I'm the type that needs sleep. Exactly. So a lot of times I have gigs where I have to do something Saturday in LA and be somewhere else Sunday morning or vice versa. And, Staying up till four or five a.m., flying, getting mm -hmm. there, and DJing straight from the airport. Like, yeah, it could be a lot. So I would say travel is probably the most difficult part of it all. Aside from that, like staying out late, I'm a I'm a night out period. So I don't really mind being out late, like during during the week or during the weekend. Mm -hmm. But overall, at the same time, it's like just being around certain people too long can, can kind of become draining. Okay. So I don't like being around <laughs> just young, rambunctious crowds anymore. Like, so how do you deal yeah. with that being in clubs like pretty much every day? It's like, sometimes, I mean, every time it's different. Like, I like it where nobody can just come up to me and get to me that easy. A That's lot of times right. the people can come right there. It's like, I don't mind somebody saying what's up real quick, saying hi, or asking what the name of a song is, or a quick request. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you get the drunk girls who want to, like, I touch the turntable. Oh, and nah. It's just like, nope. you have to be nice as you can, where they don't get on their Instagram story. This DJ sucks. Yeah. But at the same time, it's just like, it's actually business. Like, yeah. get out of my way. So. Yeah. Yeah. As far as the traveling, I was just talking to my mom about it. I was yeah. like, look, I need to get to that point where you have a private plane. Like, you can literally, yeah. like, <laughs> it what, makes traveling easier, it makes it so right? Much better. And just then you having... can just carry all your stuff. You don't have to go through the TSA. Yeah, that's, that's the worst part of it. You know, because right when you're working, you're like, I'm just trying to get from point A to point B. That's all it's about. Like, yeah. just, just dealing with that. And the fact that we're in LA, so all of our travel is east to west coast. Mm -hmm. Like, if it was a quick hour to Vegas, I wouldn't care, but having to go through time zones back and forth, like, exactly. it could be a lot. So, yeah, and then with yeah. the private plane, you wouldn't have to worry about people messing up your uh, exactly. equipment. Yeah, see? nobody's touching the equipment. Right. I ain't got, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's one of my goals right now, it, just from you saying that. Yep, yeah. yeah, it has I'm to be. I'm inspired for that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, what would you say is your most favorite thing that has happened in your career so far? You've had a lot mm. of good things. My favorite thing from my career, wow. Um, it's been a lot. I would say um, overall, just the response that I get from making a lot of my video mixes and my um, like just mixes period on mm -hmm. on Mixcloud because SoundCloud kicked me off. But anyway, um, oh, just, no. yeah, Why? long story. Okay. Copyright issues. Okay. Copyright issues, okay. but I'm on Mixcloud now, so check me okay. out. But aside from that, um, just seeing the response to me, um, the thing about me making mixes and video mixes is that I can play music that I can't play inside the club all the time mm -hmm. because the club you have a certain format it has to be a certain era usually. It's all the new stuff. Even if you don't like it, you have to play it. But making mixes and videos allows me to be creative enough to play songs that you haven't heard in years and decades. So a lot of times, I would say my favorite reaction was probably from doing the New Jack Swing video. I did that. I timed it perfectly to, to release it right when Bruno and Cardi B did the performance oh, at the Grammy. No. So as soon as I performed, I dropped the video where I had the flat top picked out. Yeah. I had the cross colors jacket. Yeah. And I put a filter to make it look like it was an old camcorder with a little fuzz at the bottom. And <laughs> I made it look authentic. And I had a New Jack City tape right in front. Like everything was oh, all calculated. Yes. And it, it was just a, a quick mix. These songs for like four seconds, all songs from like the early 90s, late 80s. So mm -hmm. just seeing that response, seeing that a lot of celebs would, would retweet those. Mm -hmm. It just showed that people do appreciate music, even if you don't see them in the club every day. Right. 
So you have to really be creative too when it comes to DJing because that whole thing, that's a lot of creativity that went behind that. I would say so, yeah. And that's what gives you the, uh, the advantage too mm -hmm. because a lot of times folks just see it as the DJ just plays the same hot songs. Like, and I realized too, as far as other DJs, like you would think every DJ is the same, but we all have our own style, our own preferences. It's just that if we're at certain places, we have to play all the same music. So we almost have to play the same stuff as the radio. Like mm -hmm. if you try to go off too much, it's like or, or play something that they know, play something they sing along to. So it's like most of us do have our own creative uh, ways, but we just can't show it that much. So I have to f uh, figure out my own lane and find how to actually display it. Yeah, that's real. Yeah. And that's where like, I'm sure you're grateful for social media. And social oh, social media is yeah. everything for me. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like 20 years ago, it would have been a whole lot different. But mm -hmm. Social media allows me to reach out to every single continent, beyond Earth, if it is somebody out there listening to Mars, Jupiter, whatever it is, <laughs> like, social media helps with all that right now. It's like, and it's instant. It's like, as soon as I post it, everybody sees it so. around the whole world. So, yeah, it's perfect. We love the social media. Yeah. Um, what is one thing that you really want to accomplish in your career that you haven't? Mm, there's a lot of things I do want to accomplish. I would say, Within DJing, I would say possibly just creating, not really a festival, but probably just creating my own party and brand that similar to all my friends who've made like Kiss and Grind, who've made Grits and Biscuits, mm. they all have these brands and I do their parties and they're always great, but just if I could create my own that somehow fits into whatever theme, whatever type of lane that I want to be in. Haven't figured it out yet, but that's one of my main goals within DJing. Outside of DJing, I would say just becoming the music supervisor. So mm. if I can get credit, so, um, of course, that would be whatever film. It's, it's not something you just jump in and get the biggest film out right. there. But eventually, if I can um, accomplish uh, getting credits on a huge film where I, I'm selecting all the music for it, curating that, and picking the artists and the producers and composers for it. So, oh, that is so yeah. dope. That, that's, that's an that's, amazing goal. Yeah, that's one of my, my main goals. So I'm taking baby steps toward that yeah. right now, just trying to get my feet wet. Yeah, so, that's what it's yeah. all about. It is, doing it is. Doing well, it, taking the steps. It's all about making those connects because we know how LA is, how Hollywood is. It's just about who you know and it's not, it's not just about having the credentials for it, but just having those right connects and contacts. That's so, real. Yeah. Yeah, that's what so, I'm learning too. <laughs> you're learning a whole lot too. You will. You'll see it more and more. Yeah, that's all it's about out here. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you so much for oh, taking you. the time to sit down to me, with me. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Of course. Appreciate you. Good thank luck with everything you. you have going on. Thank you. Try yeah. it.